Yeah, g'day, Mark here, and welcome back to my channel. Now, last week, I did a video on this Ballantron, and it doesn't work. And part of the reason why I do these videos is because I get to benefit from the wisdom of crowds. So I asked for some troubleshooting advice and got plenty of it, and it was very good. So let's take a look at this and see if we can get it going based on your advice. The problem with this unit is that this actuator, or as Stefan Gotteswinter put it, handheld highly precise jackhammer is not working. It's not doing anything. The rest of the system, with the accelerometer and the ability to isolate and measure the highest vibration, that seems to work fine. Now running through some of the excellent troubleshooting advice, the first one and most obvious is to do a resistance check on this actuator. I think most people think it's probably a solenoid, and because there's a three pin connector, it's probably a double solenoid with uh, one coil for extend and another coil for attract. Second thing it could be is that it's just mechanically jammed up, gummed up with maybe grease or dust or something. The third thing to look at would be whether there's a broken wire, either in this connector or out on the other side in the controller. Vet picking made a good suggestion as well. Maybe it's just that push button in the control unit. Maybe this just the buttons failed. Now one really excellent input was from Tornus Mechanics who pointed out that on that connector, I should have six ohms between these two and then three and three in the other combinations. One very good comment from the raw mess was that it looks like when I drop the actuator into the box, it causes a very tight bend on the cable and maybe that's the problem. But actually it's very nicely designed because there's this rail at the bottom which the whole readout unit sits on. And it's located in such a way that you slide down, it stops the actuator and there's still quite a bit of space at the bottom for a reasonably generous bend radius. It's not like it's being forced into a very hard bend there. But still, there could be a broken wire there in the cable as well. Now in Wizrom's advice, he said the other possibility is a blown driver circuit. It means opening the main box and having a look around. Suspect would probably be a driver output transistor, likely something on a heat sink connected to the solenoid's output plug. And that sort of ties into a comment from Robert Watson Bath, where he'd be interested in just seeing what it looks like inside this box. So I may actually open this up. Oh. Never a good sign. Something's rattling in there. I'll definitely have to open it up and see what that is. Let's assume that's a screw. There's actually some similarity between this Ballantron system and the systems we use on gas turbines. So all of the modern gas turbines have accelerometers mounted to them. There'll be two sets of pickups, one to measure fan vibration and the low pressure shaft and the other to pick up vibrations of the core. Vibrations are not a control parameter on an aircraft jet engine, they're only an indicating parameter. So the signal gets processed by the engine control and the pilots get displayed vibrations as units from zero being no vibration up to five units as requiring engine shutdown. Okay, let's take a look at the resistance between those first two pins. I'd like to say a big thank you to Tornus Machining, who actually have a Ballantron. They've got a small video up on YouTube about it. I'll leave a link. Because he measured the resistance between the three pins on his actuator, so that really helps me out. Yep, six ohms between those two. That's what I was expecting, I guess. But let's take the other one to the middle. So that's 3.4 across the top two pins. All right, so there I've also got just slightly over three ohms. So that would imply that looks like it's probably okay. Um, it also means that probably don't have a broken connector or cable, at least on that side. 
Now, what I think I'll do, because I know I've got that loose screw and it's not supposed to be rattling around, and because I'm one of many people who's interested in seeing what this has got on the inside, I think I'll open it up and try and find that loose screw that's rattling about. looks like six individual pieces of sheet metal which have all been screwed together. So which ones are only access panels? I think I'll start on the side. Okay that was a good guess. I need the other side open as well. All right, now where is that? There we go. So one loose screw with some black lacquer on it. Now I just have to try and work out where it came from. As far as I can tell, you have to take the top and bottom screws out and then the whole face plate should just pull off because the two circuit boards have edge connectors. Okay, it's even simpler than that. The front plate just pulls up and off on a few wires. Here, the red wire goes to plus. Okay. Okay, I still don't see where that screw came from, so let's try taking off the other end. By the way, that switch there it's been pointed out that that is the switch to go between European 220 and American 110. And you can't move it because that plate there is asymmetric and holds it in the correct position. One ten, two twenty. Still can't find where that screw came from, so let's take out the first circuit board. It's just one screw there. So this board should now just pull out. Yep. Just have to remember to put those wires back through this hole. So here we can see that circuit board. I'm going to guess these are the output drivers. This is the switch that should select the actuator on off. I guess I can test that and see whether it's switching. Looks like it's got three pairs of poles, but only two of them are in use, those two. But I still don't see a use for that extra screw. So does that switch work? Okay, that pole seems to. Okay, that works. And the front one should be the unused pair. Hmm, doesn't do anything. I guess I should probably check the back too and just make sure that those are actually working. I've checked the push button. It seems to also uh, switch normally. Oh wait, just realized where that screw came from. So here in the back of the gauge, I don't know whether it's an adjustment screw or what, but that's obviously where it came from. Now since that gauge has been working, I would kind of assume that the screw missing from this location has nothing to do with the issues it's, the machine's having, but it's not impossible that it was causing a short. Since we've got it broken down this far and I now have access to the driver circuit, let's take a quick look at those ICs and see what they're like. I'm gonna guess it's these Texas Instrument 3030Ms. I put up a photo on my Patreon page and Seth had a data sheet for those ICs. So let's go through and check them. And that was helpful having that data sheet because now I know which pin is which. So the case is the collector, this one's the base and this one's the emitter. Kind of diode test mode. And we have base to collector over. And then other way around, base to emitter is about 10 times that voltage. Yep. Now if we switch to the other one, 
repeat the same measurements over point within a few percent also the same and that's also the same so it looks to me like those ICs are probably not the issue. So I'm going to suspect that that's not the problem. You know, the more I think about it, if this is a double solenoid, which I'm pretty sure it is with its two three ohm windings, I would assume it has some sort of a centering spring and then each actuator pushes out or in, in either of the two opposing directions. Normally in it, when it's unpowered, this should be able to move. The fact that it's completely rigid seems unusual to me. So I'm kind of wondering whether I should use that wrenching flat there and just give it a little bit of a tweak to see whether it'll, it'll open it up and make it move. Since it's designed for wrenching, let's give it a go. Okay, so it is definitely free to turn now. Aha, can definitely move it in and out a little bit while wiggling it. So some little bit of motion's available there. I wonder if I just need a bit of exercise. Now according to Tornus Engineering on his Ballantron, this actuator shaft moves easily two millimeters in and out just with finger pressure and on mine I can move it but it's definitely taking a fair bit of pressure you can see there's a seal around the shaft there and it does feel like seal drag but I've put a wee bit of light oil on there just to lube it and it really made no difference. Maybe it's got a lot of grit or something stuck inside it but yeah maybe I need to pull it apart and try and give it a clean out. If anybody has a cutaway diagram of this actuator I'd appreciate it. You can see it's got three screws holding it together on the back then there's also a circlip here on the front. I'm assuming it probably pulls apart from the back. Seeing as systematic troubleshooting would require me to change one thing, test it change another thing, test it. And I've done that really well because I've done six things. I think it's probably now time to put it all back together, test it and see if it's magically fixed. Right, let's try that again. First off, if I just turn the machine on, by the way, I was told this isn't a self-test because it's a purely analog device. This is probably just the large capacitor charging. And then once it's charged, it moves back into its normal range or something. So if I now turn on the actuator, nothing happens. I would kind of expect to at least get a hum or something, but maybe it's just because it's got no vibration to lock onto. By the way, with regards to the accelerometer, there were some comments that by putting it here on top of the spindle, I was not really following what it's showing here, because at least in the second one it shows it on the side. But I don't think that's the correct understanding of this. It even says that you can put the actuator either on the spindle or on the table. An accelerometer is sensitive to a certain plane of vibration. So it's important that you measure both this plane and flip it and measure this plane. But it doesn't really matter where on the machine you pick up those vibrations because they'll be transmitted through the whole machine. I assume if you put the accelerometer on the table, you'll get lower amplitudes because there'll be some damping through the frame of the machine. But at least my understanding of vibration measurement is it doesn't really matter where you put it. So while this shows it being put mounted to the side of the spindle, I've got no good flat surface there to mount it and therefore it's showing that as, as an equal option. More important is this is the orientation for this plane and this is the 90 degrees plane. Now let's turn that spindle on. Once again tune the vibration. Okay, I've passed the maximum there. Okay, so that looks like about a maximum. But all I'm trying to do here is test this thing. So now let's test the actuator. 
and it's still doing nothing. Can't hear anything, no hum. I can move it slightly, but it's very hard. Okay, well at this point I'm still very much at two mines. It could be mechanical because this is very difficult to move. But it also could be electrical because I would at least expect to hear the solenoid humming even if it's not able to actuate. But what do you guys think? Right, well that's all I've got time for because I've got to go off on a business trip. But thanks a lot for the suggestions so far. Have a think about what else it could be and please give me some more troubleshooting steps and I'll try and get this thing going. After this video, the next video that'll be perfect for you should pop up here. So stick around and watch it. Thanks for watching.